um, catalysts are how we do that. So a catalyst facilitates chemical reactions. Um, oftentimes these are going to be enzymes. Most enzymes are proteins. Um, not all, but most. Um, <clears throat> they play a, a really important role by reducing the activation energy uh, of chemical reactions within the cell. So they make these reactions feasible at whatever the normal temperature is for that organism. So an enzyme is not changed by the reaction and it can be used over and over again. Um, enzymes do this by binding the reactant molecule and they alter the way the chemical bonds break and form, um, making the process happen faster. So they don't necessarily make the process happen in a different way, they just allow it to occur, make it happen faster. Um, and we can see this with both endergonic and exergonic uh, reactions, uh, catalysts participate in both of those. Um, <clears throat> the substance to which enzymes bind are called substrates, okay? And these can be one or more, depending on the specific reaction. Um, enzymes have active sites where the substrate binds, and the unique combination of amino acid side chains within the site creates a specific chemical environment suitable for a particular substrate to react within. Our understanding of how substrates bind their enzymes has evolved over time. Um, historically, we had this, this lock and key model um, where we tended to think of the substrate and the enzyme like two puzzle pieces that fit together. Uh, but since we've learned that it's actually what we call the induced fit model, um, this is a little more nuanced understanding of how enzyme and substrate interact with each other. So in this model, they're not seen as static, right? They're not seen as this like locking key or puzzle pieces. Um, instead, we see them as dynamic partners that undergo specific modifications as they come together. Um, so during the, this transition state, both the enzyme and the substrate undergo changes in their molecular structures. Um, these modifications serve to enhance the affinity between the substrate and the enzyme's active site, uh, which facilitates a more efficient and effective reaction. So this dynamic adjustment allows for a tighter and more precise binding, uh, and that ensures that the uh, reaction proceeds smoothly. So basically, this model recognizes that the enzyme and the substrate are not static entities, but they're flexible and adaptable molecules that fine tune their interactions to promote the success of the chemical reaction. Um, and you can see in the, the little picture we've got here, that you, know, you have this in green, the substrate that then binds. And if you look at the, um, the active site where the substrate's going to bind, uh, once binding completes, the shape shifts, call it conformation change, shape change. Um, when that happens, it causes the reaction to occur. So we go from a product, the green substrate, to our two reactants, the little blue and the yellow um, pieces. All right. So enzyme activity is influenced by a lot of different factors. Um, temperature, pH, the salt concentration, <clears throat> and cofactors or coenzymes. In fact, a really interesting one actually involves uh, oxidation of apples. Um, kind of a fun little example that you can even try on your own. So there is an enzyme present in the flesh of apples that you've all seen it. If you've cut open an apple within minutes, it starts turning brown, right? It's oxidation happening. You can stop that oxidation simply by cutting up your apple and placing it in a bowl of salt water and then draining, you leave it for about 10 minutes and then you drain off that water and give it a quick rinse. You won't ever taste the salt and your apples will not brown because you've now changed the environment and it causes that enzyme to no longer work. So they're, they're dependent on specific environmental factors to maintain their, um, their ability to work. Okay, so some molecules can inhibit or promote enzyme function. Um, we have competitive inhibition that occurs when an inhibitor molecule blocks the active site, right? They're, um, they're competing for the same spot, uh, while non-competitive inhibition happens when an inhibitor binds to a 
an allosteric site. So a different spot on the enzyme. So they're not competing for the same spot. Um, when an inhibitor binds to the allosteric site, this causes a conformational change, right, a shape change that reduces enzyme activity. Basically, it makes it so the active site is no longer quite the right shape for the substrate. Um, there are also allosteric activators. Um, so what they do is it's the opposite. They enhance an, an enzyme's activity by inducing a conformational change that increases its affinity for the substrate. Many enzymes rely on non-protein helper molecules like cofactors, which are inorganic ions, and coenzymes, other organic molecules, often vitamins, um, to function optimally. Um, these molecules temporarily or permanently can bond with the enzyme, and they promote the proper shape and function without undergoing changes themselves. Um, vitamins often serve as a, so a source of coenzymes, um, contributing to enzyme regulation and efficiency. So enzyme function can be, can be regulated by various molecules, including cofactors and coenzymes, um, and some other cellular components that control enzymatic activity through mechanisms like allosteric modulation, right, either activation or inhibition, um, competitive inhibition, and then non-competitive inhibition. Um, notably, products of cellular metabolic reactions um, play a role in regulating activity through feedback inhibition, which is really neat. So this process involves using a reaction product to inhibit its own production. Um, so basically, it slows down either the anabolic or catabolic reactions um, when the product levels are abundant. And then feedback inhibition is employed um, in the control of amino acid and nucleotide production. It's like, oh, we're getting ready to divide. My cell's getting ready to divide. I need more of these things, so you produce more of it. And once it reaches a certain level, oh, we've made enough. Now that concentration of amino acid present in the, um, in the cell will cause it to stop being metabolic or uh, being formed, being made more of. All right. All right, we made it through that whole first section. So now I know it's a lot to take in lots of new terminology, take a breather, make sure you've got your notes all sorted out, and then I will see you in our next video where we're going to talk about glycolysis.